We want to honor God because He sees everything. You were born with a plan and a purpose. He's the God of all things possible. He's the God of all miracles. Grace with Nina Michelle. I'm Michelle Humphreys. And I am Nina Keegan. Welcome to the broadcast today. We are so happy you joined us. We're going to be talking about discerning that voice of God over the world's voice. You know, in in this day and age where technology is just, just banging in our heads with constant voices and there's so many different, like, things being shot at you and it's hard to know what is true and what isn't true. But let me just tell you this. There is one voice that just rules and reigns above the cacophony of all those voices, and it is the voice of God. God, the one true voice of God, the very voice that spoke everything into existence. God spoke and the world was formed and the world began. And that voice is still true. It's it, his voice is still speaking and it's still alive and, and it's true for you today, every day. And we're going to talk about how you can hear from him. Well, and you know, that's a promise and God's word cannot lie. It says that my sheep, and whether you realize it, if you're a follower of God, you're considered a sheep. My sheep know my voice. And so we were meant to hear the voice of God. And it's not for some, you know, priest or some high and lofty yep. office. It's for the sheep. It's for us. And we can hear the voice of God as well as anybody else because we don't have to go through a priest. The Bible says that the only priest we go through is is the pre, is through the cross. Mm -hmm. You know that, and it says that we are a member of the royal priesthood, a holy nation. So we can hear that voice because we're His, and because of the cross of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And now we can go boldly to the throne of grace, the Bible says, to find help in times of trouble. So we can hear that voice when we're worried, when we're scared, yep. whatever you're going through today, if you need direction, you can hear the voice of yep. God. And we want to talk about the difference between the voice of God and everything else. Yes. You know, the Holy Spirit lives in you and he's going to help you with the vocabulary of God. And God speaks to you in, in so many ways. He speaks to you through his word primarily, the word of God. It is alive. It is living, breathing. It will, honestly, there is something in the word of God for that you can find scripture for absolutely everything you are dealing with. And honestly, you can even go to, to uh, like a search engine and you can plug in scriptures on fear, scriptures on anxiety and they'll all come up and they'll come up in all the different versions and honestly there's so many ways to help you now to find out what the word says about what you're going through maybe you're going through like an adultery or a betrayal or something serious in your life maybe you're addicted maybe you've got such issues that you just don't even know where to turn but the voice of God will help you with that and you know the Holy Spirit is always speaking in you do you ever notice Michelle like you you just like maybe you're driving and you have this notion that you should go this way instead of that way or that in a in the grocery store maybe you decided that you needed to go to a different store than usual or you took a different route to work or you, you, you did something different and you had a notion to do that. Well, m maybe it's because it, it, there was an accident on the other path or maybe it was because you went down this other aisle because someone was on that aisle that needed to hear from you. Maybe there was a person there that needed help or that God will give you a notion to speak to somebody and you don't realize that that is the voice of God talking to you when you have those kinds of notions. Right, and, the, and, and you know, Scripture says it's a still, small voice. Mm -hmm. 
You know, some people hear and they have heard, you know, God in an audible way. Um, I don't think I've ever heard God in an audible way, but he's so, that, that still small voice, whenever God speaks, you can, no one can convince you otherwise because it's almost like it's written on your heart. Mm -hmm. he, he tells you something and it, it, there's a peace that comes with it, even if it's correction. Uh, <clears throat> the best way for, for me to hear from God is always in the word. God and his word are one. He never separates from his word. Anything you hear that is contrary to his word is not God because he says not one word, not one tittle will ever pass away. God's word is true from beginning to end. So know that, and that's the best way to hear from God. I know uh, years ago, do you ever have a pity party and you say, God, do you even know where I am on the map? I feel all alone. And I remember saying that to the Lord, pretty much like that, <laughs> you know, and I opened the word and I promise you it said this. It said, I know where you live in the woodland. And I was like, I live in the woodlands. <laughs> I mean, that's actually true. You know that I, you live in, I live in at that time in the woodlands. And I was like, that's weird. That actually says that, you know, he, he does speak through he his word. He does speak to you. And he'll, he'll, I remember one time when I was, at, it was shortly after I went through a very horrific divorce. And I know that you're supposed to pray for your enemies and you're supposed to forgive them and lay it down and pray for them. And so, and I was asking the Lord to, to, to bless him and it was really hard, but I was doing it and I was making sure that I did it and I was saying those things. And um, then somebody uh, had, had recently seen my ex who, it was a very, very difficult, uh, it was through betrayal and adultery. And so, um, and saw him somewhere and they said, oh, he's doing great. He said he's doing great. And I got mad. I was so upset by that because I was like, what do you mean? How, why is he doing great? Like he yeah. did all this stuff. And even literally, you're praying for him to be, to even be though doing I'm great. praying all those things. Yes. And so I get a scripture that says, you who are obsessed with the judgment of the godless, it says, to, to lay that down because God will take care of that because he's a just God. And I was like, oh, so then I had to like, like, what do you mean when you asked me to bless him? Like God was giving me a, you know, it was a gentle conviction because I knew reading that word that God was speaking to me. He was saying, look, you're one minute, you're asking me to bless the guy. You're asking me to, you know, you want to forgive and all these things, but then you're mad about those things. And so, you know, I had to go back and repent about that. It's like, I really do want you to bless him. I want, you know, I don't want this on my conscience. I don't want this. I want to be clear. I want to forgive and lay these things down. And, and this is how he will speak to you. He will always show you it's for all for his glory because he wants, not that he's mad at me, but he doesn't want me to miss out on blessings because I'm all in this bitterness and ought. Right. So, right. And it's, it, you know, sometimes I, I panic when I feel like I can't hear the word. Yeah. You know, I'm like, everybody else is hearing from God and I'm not hearing from God. You, you got to quiet your spirit, turn on some cool. music. And we're going to talk more about how to hear the voice of God when we return. The world needs to be reached with the message of Jesus. And that is the mission of Grace Grace with Nina and Michelle, to see people's lives change with the saving power of Jesus Christ. When you donate to Grace Grace Ministries, you're also reaching orphans and the underprivileged throughout the world, as well as the United States. The Bible says that when we help the least, the forgotten and the overlooked, we have done something for Jesus himself. Will you be a part of what God is doing to help those in need and those who are hungering to hear the real message of Jesus? Give today by logging on to ninaandmichelle.com or text the word GIVE to 325-603-3354. You can also send in a check to 6315B FM 1488 Road, number 122, Magnolia, Texas 77354. Grace Grace Ministries is a 501c3 charitable organization. Gifts are tax deductible, so join us in the Great Commission today. Give now. Welcome back to Grace Grace with Nina and Michelle. We are talking about discerning the voice of God. And how do we really hear the voice of God? 
and we were talking about how, you know, sometimes it's hard to, to hear, like you feel like you can't hear. And for me, it makes me kind of panic. Um, but when I'm going through something, I will usually ask the Lord for a scripture because that's how God speaks. Yeah. Uh, my mother-in-law used to always say, you know, the Bible is the only book you know, you read other books, but the Bible is the only book that reads you. Amen. So when you read that Bible, it's like a mirror. And it does say that. It's like a mirror. So when you're reading, God is speaking to your spirit. So it's the best way to discern the will of God and the voice of yes. God. And, um, and, and even for like strange situations, I remember there was um, someone that was having cold feet after, you know, it's like, two days before the big wedding and had cold feet. And, uh, and, and I, you know, I, I didn't know whether they were going to get married or not. And so I was like, God, you know, just talk to me, please. I, I, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to help them. Um, and this is in the Bible. It says there will be singing and dancing in the house of oh, the Lord. righteous. And so I said, I called the bride and I said, gonna have a wedding. We're gonna have a wedding because I feel like the Lord just spoke. And when I say, you know, I'm not talking about every word. I'm saying that it just like pierces your heart. When you're reading it, it jumps off the page. Mm -hmm. it, it, it feels different than just mm -hmm. reading the Bible. It's like a word for that situation. It's called a rhema word. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's the best way to hear the voice of God. Yeah. I ask the Lord for his agenda. It's like, show me what your agenda, heaven's agenda is for my life. And to send destiny's helpers, like send, send people to walk alongside, send somebody that's gonna confirm what you're saying to me. Let me hear from you today. Let me hear this word. Let me hear you say this. And you know, the Bible says that uh, the God of glory thunders. The voice of the Lord is powerful. That is Psalm 29, three. And it's like, that's so true because it's like a thunder. It's like, it hits you. There's, I, you know, we can read the Bible over and over and over again, but then, and, and I will read something that I feel like I never read before ever. It, yeah, and, and it's like, because time. at this particular time, that is speaking to me where it never was, it, it wasn't speaking to me before. So it never stood out to me. And so that's how the Bible is reading you. It's like, what? That's in the Bible? That yes. says that? And that is, it's like an anointing falls. You know, it's right. And then I'll say, Lord, let somebody tell me this again. Let somebody confirm this for me. And even, even fleeces, like I'll put out fleeces that might not even be asking for a specific word of God, but I will ask for something like, let me know that this person's heart is right. Let me, let me hear you say that. And I'll, some, next thing you know, somebody will say to me, you know, that person has the best heart. And, you know, just they wouldn't have known that I was asking for that. And so you can ask that. You can fleece God. You can ask him to have, let him show me that I'm on the right path. And one of the best ways, too, is also by, I pray the keys of David scripture, Isaiah 22, 22. And when you pray and say, Lord, open the doors for me. If this is of you, speak to me through these open doors. If this is of you, open wide this door and no man can shut it. And if it's not of you, lock me out of this and don't let any man open this for me. So you can pray these scriptures. The voice of God is speaking to you through these scriptures. And when you know them for yourselves, you know how to pray them over yourself and you know how to hear from the Lord through his word. Yes. And I mean, you can get an unction of the Holy Spirit, you know, where there's just a knowing that that's the only way I can describe it. It's like, you know, it like, for example, uh, I mean, pretty much all kids lie. You know, if you have a kid, you, it, it, that child has probably lied to you at one point or the other. And the Holy Spirit will speak. And, uh, I remember uh, for two years I taught school and I was, uh, that was an interesting, that's a whole different story, but talking about hearing the voice of God. And one day I was uh, grading papers and my little fourth graders were taking a test and I'm grading and look, kind of looking up and everything. And the Holy Spirit just spoke to me and said, so-and-so is cheating. And so I was like, hmm. I was looking, you know, and I couldn't see it. 
I was like, well, I don't see it. And then I was really looking, you know, still nothing. And so um, anyway, we, everybody turns their papers in and I'm like, Lord, I think you said that. So confirm it. And this little tattletale comes up and says, hey, he was cheating. And so uh, I called him outside, uh, you know, outside the classroom. And I said, were you cheating? And he said, um, no, ma'am, I was not. And I said, but the Holy Spirit, I feel like, told me you were cheating. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I was cheating. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you know, and I didn't know that. And I said, think about how much the Lord loves you, that he did not want you to get away with something like cheating. And he wants you to walk in integrity, mm -hmm. you know. And, and so, you know, that is, that is just a small example of hearing the voice of God in such a strange way, yeah. you know. I used to say that to my kids all the time because they used to be, it's like if their group of friends was all doing something, it would be them that got caught. And, it, and I would say, because God loves you too much yes. to let you, you know, run amok and do these kinds of things that you're doing. And so you're going to get busted, you know, Holy Spirit busted because, you know, God wants better for you and has better for you. And you're not going to go down these, these rabbit holes of, of stuff. And when they think they get by with it, they keep going. Well, the so. Bible even says that. Mm -hmm. if, a, if a man continues to sin and he is not caught or he does not repent, it hardens his heart towards the Lord. So if your idea is just to ignore what's going on with your children or whatever, maybe we want to rethink that. I'm not saying visit every problem, you know, but make sure you're, you're paying attention. Yeah. Because you don't want your children to get hard towards the Lord. No, God is always speaking. He's got so much and to he say. He disciplines those he loves, and that's how we should handle yeah. Amen. In a loving way. Yes, always. And because that's how he handles us. You know, man shall not live by bread alone, but on every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. And that is a scripture. And, you know, think about... Think about that's what we eat. We not bread, but we we eat on the word yeah. of the Lord. We digest what God is saying. Well, and if I can just add to what you're saying, you know, it that word proceeds is the word proceedeth. Like mm -hmm. it comes out of the mouth, like it's still flowing. I'm not saying God's adding to his word. That's not what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But he will he will speak directly to your situation as needed. Amen. I believe. And we will talk more about that when we come right back. Stay right there. The world needs to be reached with the message of Jesus. And that is the mission of Grace Grace with Nina and Michelle, to see people's lives change with the saving power of Jesus Christ. When you donate to Grace Grace Ministries, you're also reaching orphans and the underprivileged throughout the world, as well as the United States. The Bible says that when we help the least, the forgotten and the overlooked, we have done something for Jesus himself. Will you be a part of what God is doing to help those in need and those who are hungering to hear the real message of Jesus? Give today by logging on to ninaandmichelle.com or text the word GIVE to 325-603-3354. You can also send in a check to 6315B FM 1488 Road, number 122, Magnolia, Texas 77354. Grace Grace Ministries is a 501c3 charitable organization. Gifts are tax deductible, so join us in the Great Commission today. Give now. Welcome back. You are watching Grace Grace with Nina and Michelle. And we're talking about God and how he speaks to us. And, you know, there's so many voices vying for your attention all the time. And so many times it's like, you know, we, we've been places so many times where God has like given us a word for somebody. And I mean, there was a time, Michelle, remember when we knew somebody and I didn't really know her very well. I knew who she was and had only spoken to her once or twice in my life. So I really did not know her personally. And she was about to get married. Remember this? She, like, she met somebody kind of like, she, and she was going to marry this guy. And I see this guy. I, for the first time, I see her with the guy. We saw him together. Yeah. And we both said the same thing. And it was kind of crazy. And so then I, I knew uh, that, the, that the Lord did not want her to marry him. And long story short, I had a word for her. And when 
I was speaking, it was, it was, it was, it was that, you know, these things about this man that she should not marry him. But while I was giving her that word, I, I stopped and I said, you already know all this. This is confirmation for you. I did not know her like personally at all. And so when she stopped and it was all, you know, the things I was saying, she, I, I said, wait a minute now, you know, I know this is what the Lord is showing me that you already know this and you're, he's confirming all of this. And so her wedding was in like a couple weeks the, the oh, yeah. family everybody was, had their flights, their flights and, 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 and that's a hard thing and, when you hear from the yeah. Lord and the weddings planned and, uh, yeah. and all of those things. And yeah. so then, um, a year later, we're going on a trip to Israel and she happens to be going on this trip and she comes up to me and she said, she, she did not go through with the wedding, but she said, everything that you said actually happened. And he was involved in these certain things and it was all happening and it really happened. And so, you know, God will always, so for her, that was confirmation of things that, you know, maybe the Lord was showing her and she's like, no, he seems so nice or no, it's not, you know, we can, we can sort of go in our minds and we can kind of like, you know, you know, think things away all the time and say, ah, no, that's just, you know, what is the devil and what's of God, you know? And so, but when you already know something, when you have that check in your spirit, that is the Lord speaking to you. That is a red flag. That is that still small voice because God is first and foremost peaceable, peaceable. And he speaks to you through that, through yes. peace, his perfect peace. Well, and and to, to, if you're trying to discern the voice of God versus the enemy, you know, Satan brings confusion. Mm -hmm. So if you are walking in confusion, you can know that that is not the voice of God. Also, you can know that, you know, the that God is never going to tell you to do something that's outside of his word. Mm -hmm. You know, so in other words, like if you love somebody and they're not a Christian, God's not going to say, marry that person. Mm -hmm. You know, that is against the word. The Bible says that we are not to be unequally yoked. We mm -hmm. are to marry those who believe. And, uh, you know, so th these are just a few ways. Also, the feeling of peace. W when you have heard from God there it doesn't matter if it's hard or scary you know that there's a like a you're settled peace. there's a peace there's a confirmation God will often you'll hear on you know a sermon or in the word or on the radio you know that something that you're asking for even this weekend let me just say, I'll be honest. When we were doing our uh, sermon, our, our show on uh, humility and vaingloriousness, I started thinking, God, am I going to have to get on TV and confess anything? You know, because I'll do it. I'll do it if you want me to. <laughs> mm -hmm. But tell me that, you know, I'm not practicing my piety in front of others. You know, I don't want to be like a Pharisee. Right. And so when I went to this, <laughs> this uh, church meeting this weekend, I said, confirm that, that my heart is genuine before you. And, um, and, and so I'm not even making this up. This is how God speaks. This lady that I know, I do not know her. She just grabbed me and she said, you know what? You're genuine. You're the real deal. Your heart is pure before the Lord. I mean, it was like, there's no way. I, d I had never seen her before, ever. I, I had never spoken to her before. Only God heard that request. Mm -hmm. God speaks like that. Yeah. He will use another believer to confirm something. That is so precious mm -hmm. when God does something like yeah. that. Yeah, he, when he, he just sends somebody your way, you know, to, to confirm you and give you that word. And also he's not the author of confusion and chaos. And so when God is, speaks to you through that, if you're so confused about a decision and there's so much angst in you, you know, when he says he's peaceable, if you were, were making the right decision, there would be a peace about it because he is not going to, you know, he's not going to call, allow all this chaos and confusion. Right. And, you know, if you've chosen maybe on that fork in the path, you went the, the wrong decision, you know, it's okay. You can back up, just go back and start over, repent and say, okay, Lord, this, I, I went through the wrong door. I made the wrong choice, but I am asking you to fix it. Lord, you 
you, you protect me, guide me, lead me, show me the right way. And he will speak to you through that, through, through a peace that you have. And he will, and then again, you can always ask for confirmation. He said he'll confirm you three times. He will, you know, and when I'm really struggling with indecision, I will always, always ask, Lord, just let somebody call me, send me a scripture. Amen. Amen. Time and to pray. Time to pray. And we are going to believe that you're going to hear God's voice. And we're going to ask for a special yes. anointing to hear God's voice. Amen. Lord, we thank you that you are opening our ears, our eyes, our hearts. That we will have eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to understand. We will hear your voice in a new and fresh way in the mighty name of Jesus. Open our ears, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. There's nothing like the voice of God. And so we're so grateful for that every day. It's what keeps us going. We are so grateful for you guys and for all of your wonderful comments. And we just love hearing from you. Send us your prayer requests. We're so privileged to pray for you and with you. We're very interactive with our viewers. Uh, you can find us all over social media, Grace Grace with Nina and Michelle or Nina Keegan Ministries Facebook. And we have two podcasts by those same names wherever your favorite podcasting app is and it's all free to download and so uh, we we're so grateful you got to stay tuned because our dear friend Daryl Youngblood is coming on he has a powerful message you're going to want to hear from him you're going to want to check out his ministry rational defense of faith and it's uh it's coming up so stay tuned and again we love you we're grateful for you god bless you does science disprove god is there a war between science and faith? We don't need God to create a universe. There's no evidence for God, and it's irrational. Is there no evidence for God? Am I delusional for my beliefs? It is delusional and stupid. Am I brainwashed? Do I ignore reason? Logic. Critical thinking. Science. RDOF uses logic and reasoning. RDOF has empowered my sons to defend their faith with facts. If you want to be equipped to defend against the biggest objections to the existence of God, RDOF is the place for you. Has science really ruled out God? Is faith at war with science? If you want to be equipped to respond to these claims and more, check out RDOF.org. The evidence he presents is so powerful and overwhelming. Incredibly compelling, yet easily understandable. We believe in rationality, we believe in reason, we believe in science, and we believe in the existence of God. I would leave every event with a mind-boggling awe and assurance. I never believed in God. I just think it was craziness. RDOF confirmed my faith. RDOF confirmed my uh, full belief, full faith in the Lord, man. The appearance of design in the universe is undeniable. The lights, the crowd, the videos. To book a presentation or watch our free videos, go to rdof.org or find us on Facebook at RDOF Events.